In this session, we're going to take a look at creating some insane flame brushes for our design work in Corel Draw, specifically for our t-shirt or apparel design work. But you can also use these for things like your wraps and your posters and everything else you can think of relating to graphic design. I'd have to say that working with brushes is one of the biggest breakthroughs in my design career, and I find myself using them all the time. I used them in a recent tutorial about the pointilizer tool in Corel Draw, and what they really enable me to do is to shape or form graphic objects to the design, like I did with the 22 Revolt Racing, where you see the flames formed around the design, giving me the ability to add that touch to that design that just gives it that little bit of pop or depth. And creating these brushes, there's some secrets that I've come across that really aren't out there, and especially relating to transparency, because if you try to add a brush to the artistic media library through Corel with transparency in it, it will reject it. But if you save it out as a legacy CMX file, you'll be able to preserve the transparency and have that transparency in your brush. And you'll be able to create brushes that have a lot of pop and depth to them and color, etc. So to get started here, I'm going to be working with my Wacom tablet just to draw my flame. And I'll just go ahead and zoom out using my mouse wheel here and I'll come back in over here. I'm going to go over to my Wacom tablet here. I'm going to come over here to the freehand tool. And I'm going to use that just to create a basic flame shape. And I'm going to go back in and dress that up and tweak it out. So just start out by drawing some brush type flame elements that I can come back to at a later time and dress them up. And I'll just create basics here that I can work with. And I'll bring this up in here. and then. Adding something like this little flare here really helps add to the quality of the brush. And we'll do the same thing here. And we'll bring this up here and we'll come over this way. And we'll come down here like that. And then we'll bring this over here across the bottom, a smaller section. And we'll come back in and we'll add another one here. And I'm kind of loose with this. I'm not trying to be perfect because I'm going to come back in and clean all of this up and tweak it and you'll see that during this video and I'll come back in here and then I'll come over here with a smaller one bring that up come back out this way maybe come back in down here and then come back up there now here I have a basic flame shape that I can make the brush with and I'm going to go to my shape tool here and I'll start coming in and tweaking this and I'll delete this I'll come up here to this node and I'll bring this more down like this and then I'll bring this left click here left click here make sure I get a hold of that bring that up I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna make sure this is a cusp bring this shape out more like that I might come in here drop a node here with two clicks double click here to delete that and then just dial that shape in and work my way through this brush make this a little bit thinner right there I'll come here make sure that this is a cusp it is bring this back left click hold down and bring that over that way and kind of just build this round shape out a little bit better so I'll come and drop a note here double click drop a note there go ahead and delete that double click there that's nice and round now I'm kinda of happy with that I might bring this in a little bit here just to form that shape and you can see how that's forming out there. I'll work my way through here and we'll bring this over this way and we'll double click here. I want to smooth this out and we want to come in here and double click here and smooth that out. Drop a node here, bring this down say to right about there. I'll get rid of this. This is going to be a cusp so I'm going to change that to a cusp Go ahead and grab this, bring this up this way, do the same thing here, left click, hold down, bring that up that way, get this kind of nice and round. Now, if I want to bring a flare in here, I can do that, I can flare this up, I guess you could say. Go ahead and double click here, double click here, bring this up this way, and then pull these down, and just put that touch of that flare on there. Double click that, and I'm going to bring this over here just like that and we'll get that kind of a flare look on there. I'm going to go here make sure we're a cusp. We're not a cusp. I'm going to change that to a cusp in the properties bar. Left click and I'll bring this up this way. 
this is going off in that direction quite a bit I'll smooth that out come over here and smooth this out double click here pull this in significantly Come up here I'll change this to a cusp left click pull that over pull this down a little bit I need to select that again make sure I've got that selected and bring this down this way and just smooth these out so I'm getting a nice flame look here I'll double click here want nice clean lines here and I'm going to come in here to this node change this to a cusp I'll pull this over to this direction and get that flame shape in there double click here I'm going to smooth this area out double click they'll smooth that out now you see I lost that there so I'll hit control Z I'll drop another node up here just so that this curve is going to be nice and smooth as you can see there I'm going to come over here I'll delete this node double click that left click hold down get this node and attach it to the other one so I close the graphic pull that over that way go ahead and smooth this out here in this direction now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this node and I'm going to make sure this is a cusp zoom out and I'm going to bring this around this way I want to smooth this out a little bit so I'll double click drop a node there double click delete that node come here and I want this to kind of go in that way and then double click here and come up this way double click there and drop a node and you can see how I'm shaping by deleting nodes and adding nodes and really letting the nodes work for themselves and this I'm going to go ahead and double click there and that shape looks good right there I'm going to go in here drop a node here double click change that to a cusp pull this over so we got a nice point here I'm going to go ahead and delete this node and you can see that shape there and I'm going to drop a node up here delete this and I'll smooth that out and what I'll do is I'll actually drop a node here again drop a node here again and then left click drag this up this way I'm going to pull this here pull that there and give that kind of a flare come in here drop another node here make sure that this is a cusp and I'll bring this over here and I've got a really slippery desk here so it's a little hard for me to grab these nodes with the mouse but you can see where I'm going with this and we look pretty smooth through here I can double click here just smooth that out a bit and I can pull this left click you can see that's not a cusp so I'm going to change that to a cusp pull this back in down around this way and then I'll come up here to this node change this to a cusp bring this in and I'm zooming in and out with my mouse wheel as I'm working here and I'll bring this in this way go ahead and get rid of this node here you can actually lasso that and hit the delete key I'll move this up this way I'm going to arch this up to give it some flare there I'm going to drop a node here to protect this area while I add the flare so that I keep that roundness that's there and then I'll come up here I can see that I've got a cusp here and I might want to do some things with that this seems to be overlapping this way and I'll pull that out that way so here in a few minutes I've created a pretty decent flame type graphic and then I'm going to go ahead and straighten this out so I'll bring this out so it'll be nice and straight for my brush with my flame graphic selected I'm going to come over here and fill this with a red I'm going to come over here to my interactive tools and I'm going to go to the interactive contour. Right now this is set to 1 at 0 0.14. I'm going to change this to 0 0.2. And I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to pull this way up into the hundreds and let that apply. Now that gave me 52 steps. I might want to go to 0 0.1 and put some more steps in there. Bring that up. And that gives me 96. Looks like the maximum I can get is 104. Then I'm going to go to my pick tool. I'm going to right click on this and select break contour group apart. I'll come over here and I'm going to take the outline off of that. I'm going to fill that with yellow. I'm going to come over here to my transparency and I'll just key in 96 and hit enter. Now apparently I already had the yellow selected in the background. You can see that that's still here. I want to fill that with red. 
and I want to take the transparency off of that. And I'll go ahead and select both of these and hit the C and E key just to put them back in place. And now you can see that effect. Now, once I've made this brush with the transparency that's got this depth to it because of the contour that's set up with the transparency, go ahead and straighten this out just so it'll be nice and straight for the brush. I can take this and start to do some different things with it. Go ahead and left click one time, drag this down, right click one time, duplicate that. I'll take this contour with the transparency left click hold down right click one time bring that right to say right about there i'll fill that with a black and i'll right click and i'll go order to back of page and you can see i can get a really cool your rock shadow look from that so that may be a different brush that i want to use for different types of looks then i could go to something like that same thing again i'll go ahead and take this drop shadow I'll go to bitmaps convert to bitmap RGB, make sure you've got a transparent background because I'm going to use the pointillizer again. Let that process. Transparency is very important when you're trying to do halftone effects with pointillizer, and you can check out the pointillizer tutorial for that. I'll open up my pointillizer docker. I'm going to go with a scale of 2.0. I'm going to change my density to, say, 16. Make sure I'm set to opacity. And with that selected, I'll go ahead and click apply and we'll let that process and then I'll end up with a cool halftone effect underneath my flames brush. So here I could go through and create a number of different looks to go along with my brushes. And I'll right click on that and I'll select order, go to back of page. Maybe I'll fill that with a gray and zoom in there and take a look at that effect. Nice halftone effect built in behind the brush. And I could even do something like take that same halftone effect, copy that paste that, bring that into my graphic, line it up in here. I'll zoom in here so I can line that up better. And I'll hold down Alt and I'll cut and that'll get rid of that yellow. I'll change this to say mm, an orange and then I'll paste that yellow back in and you can see the effect that I'm going to get there with the half tones, which is going to be really nice. So you can really dial in to different effects and things like that once you've created one of, one of these brushes. Now the next thing to do is add these to our brush list so that we can get to them and use them as brushes. One of the things you want to be aware of is that if you try to go through the artistic media docker by left click, drag down, and add to your artistic media docker or folder with brushes because of the transparency, it's going to say it's invalid. But if you take this object, and we'll hit Control E to export. And I'll call this Flames Brush 3. And I'll go with the CMX Corel Presentation Exchange Legacy. And I want to change this to a 3, not a 2. We'll go ahead and select that and hit a 3. And we'll go ahead and export that. And we'll go here and we'll go Control E here. We'll call this Flames Brushes 4. And those are just some brushes that I was preparing for the tutorial. But if you don't go as this CMX Corel Presentation Exchange Legacy, you're not going to be able to support the transparencies in the brushes. And we'll do the same thing here. Control E. And I'll call this Brush 5. and export. Now with these set up, I'll go ahead and get my Revolt Racing logo here, just the text logo. I'll make this quite a bit bigger and we'll move this over here. I'll go to my artistic media tool. Here I'll go to my folders. Now I'm set to flames. I'm going to go ahead and refresh that. I'll select OK, open that back up and then I'll go back to flames. That'll refresh that list. If you have artistic here, you'll need to change it to custom for it to work in your Corel version. And then you'll be able to see our flames brushes here that we've created going down through the list. So what I'll do is I want to make sure I don't have anything selected because if I do and then I select a brush, it's going to apply that brush to whatever I have selected. So I'm going to come down here to the one we created with some of the half tones. I'll select that. I'll zoom in here, just pushing forward on my mouse wheel left click and then I'll come up 
around the design and just flare up this way and stop right there. And you can see that with the halftone effect. Now this is broken up a little bit. Very easy to deal with. Just come in here, double click, and it'll get rid of some of these nodes and that'll clean this up. And we can keep this one here and we could left click over here on the handle and bring this out and tie this so that it's gonna come right out off the side this way. Bring this out a little bit more. I'm gonna double click this and get rid of that, smooth that out. And we can see that flames effect in the design. And then if I want to, with this select, I can go back to my artistic media tool and I can look at some different looks with some of the different flames that I've created. I could look at just a plain flame. I could look at a different copy of another flame that I built earlier. I could look at something like the halftone flames that I have here. Where's one of those? We have one of those, I believe, right here. Let that process, and that's got a different look with the halftones built into it, as you can see right there. Now, once I have the brush that I'm happy with, and I'll go back to, say, this brush here. And I want to double click on that and see if that node's causing a problem there. You can come in here and maybe drop a node here and then get rid of that. And you'll see how that smooths that right out. And we'll bring this over this way. Now, I can also go from my artistic media tool and change the width of this. I could make it significantly thicker for more effect, or I could bring it down, left click, and make it thinner, as you can see there. So I'll take this, and what I'll do is, since I'm happy with this, I'll go ahead and hold down, left click, start moving right click one time, bring this down over here. I'm gonna come over here to this handle, left click, hold down control, so you get a perfect mirror, and bring this in this way, on the other side. And I'll go ahead and rotate this just a little bit, so it looks like it is in keeping with the brush on the other side. And I could actually enlarge this a little bit just to balance it out. And then I'll go ahead and select both of these, right click, order, and go to back of page. And there I've got that look built in with the half tones. So you can see that working with brushes, you have the ability to shape and form and create many things that are really good design assets for t-shirt design because you can form them to your design and create really different looking design elements as opposed to working with static clip art that you can't form unless you go to the envelope tool and go through all these other different steps. Brushes are very different. Now I have a whole training series on advancedtshirts.com called Secrets of Brush Design. We have actually 1,600 brushes on the website. I've created thousands of brushes actually and released about 1,600 of them or 1,400 of them I think that I work with in my design process because it just gives me that ability to add a touch to a design literally in a matter of minutes that changes the entire appearance of the design. I would say, you know, as I've said, brushes is probably one of the most significant breakthroughs in my design career. And this is all vector, so you can go in here and change colors. You know, you can change this to a, a blue brush or what have you. So we'll go ahead and wrap here on this brushes session, how to create your own insane flame brushes. And you can go ahead and practice with this. And we'll see you in our next video.